Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a start of the work week out here. Monday, new month, July 1st, 2024, about 11.56 a.m. California time, where it's supposed to be super hot this week. We'll get to the weather here towards the end of this video. Latest earthquake shows a 1.5 into the area of California. Let's go ahead and see what's going on down here across the uh, southern portion of the state. As you can see here, last 24 hours, I don't think we've seen anything big overnight. Um... Looks like most of the activity here, very small earthquake activity. Uh, 3.1 though. Oh, where'd that 3.1 go? Oh, that's way up in Wyoming. Okay, that's uh, early this morning. Aside from that, California in general is uh, fairly quiet right now. Not a whole lot of larger scale movement taking place here. Uh, one earthquake off the San Andreas Fault, 1.9. But overall, seismic activity out here at a minimal for now. Uh, there's that earthquake up here in the Wyoming region, 3.1 near Rock Springs. It's definitely well south of Yellowstone, but I'm sure that showed up pretty nicely on the um, seismograph station. Let's see if we can find that. Three, well, maybe not. Maybe that's just a little too far down. There. As far as uh, earthquake activity goes... It doesn't look like there's a whole lot out here. Uh, a couple very small spikes out here in the last 24 hours, but really no major uh, movement that I can spot out there in the uh, Wyoming region. A couple earthquakes there in Idaho as well. Some twos. Uh, let's see what else we got across the... Uh, let's see what we got going on down here in the southern portion of Texas. Out here in the big time oil fields. A couple ones out there it looks like over the last 24 hours. Nothing big. For now, uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone, I believe that was from yesterday. Yes, at 1.8 from yesterday. No new earthquake activity to discuss on that region of the country. Uh, over here across the western Pacific, obviously getting uh, quite a bit of movement in this region following all the deeper activity here yesterday. Uh, let's see if we got any major movement overnight. Did see that shallow five-pointer upstream from the deeper quake yesterday here. Pretty good swarm of activity, it looks like, uh, around the Philippines right now. Twos, threes, and even some fours in there. And uh, a little bit of clustering going on here across Papua New Guinea area. Uh, New Zealand still sitting in there with some threes. Of course, they've seen some activity south of the area along the plate boundary here. This little triple point junction between the tw uh, three major plates. Um, still seeing some activity over here overnight with a 4.6, a little bit further to the west here. So keep an eye on this central region of the plate boundary. You know, it's uh, there's a couple threes coming up here, or that have been coming up, as uh, far as seismic activity goes. But I believe we can see something larger here. and We should see something larger here soon uh, due to all this activity that's taking place around the New Zealand region. Uh, Hawaii, looks like there's uh, still some earthquake activity out here. Really nothing changing overnight uh, there's a little bit of a southward migration here towards the east rift zone that's what we got to watch out for the latest updated information here from the usgs states that the volcano is currently not erupting and the seismic swarm um continues but uh, at a declining rate no signs of an imminent eruption at this time but any increases in seismic activity and or deformation could result in a new eruptive episode so obviously things are still inflating underneath the area let's check out the deformation data here let's see what we have um, kind of leveled off here it looks like we did peek out there for a little bit it seems like we've reached an, a, a point where something should take place here soon this is the last 30 days of inflation there's a minor eruption that began last month almost 30 days ago um, but aside from that we've been going up and up and up and just kind of watching this little interesting event here over the past couple days there with a seismic swarm but declining uh, activity in terms of inflation not a not a large amount but we definitely got some stuff moving around down below the surface there so we're at a uh, at a standstill for now uh, Alaska area still looking at uh, some movement up there. Mostly smaller microquake activity. Nothing big out here across the Aleutian Trench for now. And as uh, far as the rest of the globe goes here, little earthquake out in this um, 
this area right here, the, the uh, Gulf of Aden, off the coast of Yemen. Diverge, uh, divergent boundary out here. You can see the uh, couple different fracture zones going on. Let's see what else we got. Aside from that, it just looks like a typical day out here on this planet for a Monday. Really not a whole lot of large-scale movement uh, to take note of. Twos and threes up and down the board. A little bit of clustering going on here across the Middle America Trench. That's going to be this uh, pancake stacking of quakes there. Not showing up on the USGS map, but a lot of smaller quakes there in that area today. Uh, let's see. 1.3. Yeah, really nothing major to discuss here. Let's go check out space weather activity. See if there, see if we got anything going on here. Did have a little bit of in flare activity. It looks like very small in flare. Uh, looks like an M2.1. From sunspot 3730. So that's going to be right over here. There's a little bit of clustering or uh, magnetic complexity within that core, it looks like. 3730 is going to be right about here. But overall, there's really not a huge threat out here for any you know super strong flares or major CMEs out here. Um, so on the sun, it looks fairly quiet as well. Again, the forecast calls for not a whole lot of auroras there. Flare threat still minimal, 99% chance for C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance or so. Really not a whole lot of major activity to uh, take note of there. As uh, far as close asteroid approaches go, well, here's the next five of them. Looks like here tomorrow we got a couple coming, uh, well, at a safe distance. There's really not a whole lot of close ones here. The closest one shows a 937,000 mile uh, approach by a 260 foot asteroid which is pretty large but uh, it's passing us at a safe distance here so not uh, not really seeing anything of any significance for now let's check out hurricane barrel and I believe we're at a category 5 right now we're very close to it got maximum sustained winds here of 150 miles per hour goodness that is a major hurricane it is expected to remain a major hurricane as it travels towards the caribbean got hurricane watches up here in jamaica in effect now there's a lot of open water here going to be interesting to watch and see how this performs in this area not really going over land So it should remain straight, uh, strong for a little while as it uh, ventures off towards the Jamaica area and eventually to the Mexico and then potentially into the Gulf of Mexico area. Let's put this uh, in the runtime there. I just, one of those islands got hit directly, that eye going right over it. Beautiful, well-defined eye. And again, that's... Uh, that is definitely a significant uh, looking hurricane for sure. So let me go back here and check out the spaghetti model, see if anything has changed. Global and hurricane models, this is kind of an all-in-one model. Most of this modeling does show it hitting the Mexico area. You know, obviously it will disintegrate more as it goes over land here and potentially head up north or maybe even further west but there's not a whole lot of models here trending you know uh, for a sharp northward turn into the gulf where it could remain a strong hurricane it just i don't see that happening none of the models are hinting at that so that is good news but uh, yeah 100 and 150 mile per hour sustained winds goodness that is crazy moving west northwest at about 20 miles per hour that's a big deal, that's for sure. Let's see if there's anything new on this one as far as updated information goes. Um, expected to remain a powerful hurricane as it moves across the Caribbean Sea later this week. So here's the uh, estimated arrival times of wind. Tropical storm force winds here. Looks like uh, 
Thursday during the day sometime here we'll see those tropical storm force winds. And uh, this is just a cone of uncertainty as well. Maybe a little south, maybe a little bit more, more north. But uh, either way, got to watch that hurricane pretty closely. And there's another one behind that. Uh, it's got a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. Uh, remnants of Chris over here hitting that area with some decent rain. Let's see here. Let's check out the GFS model, see what this wants to point out. Watch the Gulf of Mexico here. Yeah, that system does stay pretty set up. Uh, fairly south here into the Mexico area as a very weak tropical system so that's gonna be the uh, remnants there of barrel once it uh, heads into this position later this weekend and uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the uh, effects here of the high pressure that's building out here across the west coast we got some very hot temperatures in the forecast uh i you know right now it's yeah it's 96 degrees out in the backyard just outside of chico these are forecasted highs in the 100 range uh, the heat's really not going to peak up here until we head about midweek 109 or so tomorrow um and as we head towards uh oops let me go back here Head towards Wednesday, 113 miles per or 113 miles per hour wind out here. That'd be crazy. Uh, 113 degrees out here, and then uh, I think Thursday is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit of cooler, cooler weather. I would say not much though, right? And then Friday is going to be a scorcher. Look at this. Talking about 118 could be widespread up in the northern end of the Sacramento Valley. We could see 120. Um, and these models are trending hotter and hotter with each run. So this is a no joke. Oh my gosh, that is not good there. <laughs> I hope these are wrong temperatures, but it's either way, folks. This is due to a massive high pressure system that's building off the uh, west coast. You can see it right here in the orange as it ventures a little bit closer inland. It just starts to cook this area, and uh, you know there's really no relief that. Uh, position of the high pressure is going to cut off any inflow that may take place from the delta of course it's going to stay you know somewhat cool there across the coastline immediate coast but it's going to stick around for a little bit i'm hoping it gets out of here maybe towards the end of the month we might get a little bit of a break uh, but i guess we'll see it's going to be hot not liking that at all um Here's the temp anomalies here. As you can see, quite a bit of above average. I mean, it's very common to see temperatures above 100 out here in the Sacramento Valley, but 115, 118, 120, those would be definitely some record-breaking temperatures. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a scorcher out here if you live out here like I do. Goodness. But, like I said, hopefully we get a little break here towards the end of or towards the uh, middle of July. All right, folks, um, I think that's about it. Um, again, earthquake activity, just uh, a little on the minimal side. Let's see what our largest quake was here over the last 24 hours. Uh, well, there's about on the islands, but here after midnight of 5.0. Still watch the New Zealand area, you know, movement down south here, a lot of deeper activity trying to unzip this area here recently uh, and New Zealand has been seeing some threes and whatnot but uh, I think we should be uh, expecting some further activity here soon all right I'm out of here folks I think I'm gonna make it a pool day get out in the pool and relax a little bit stay out of the heat we'll catch you guys later <laughs>